Uh, good afternoon, everyone. It's always a little bit of a shocker going straight after lunch. I saw the uh, desserts there and probably make everyone very sleepy. But uh, knowing that, I've gone for something quite simple today, I think. A lot of easy wins, perhaps, and key takeouts for how you can sort of harness social media in, in whatever you're trying to do within your company. Um, so looking at how social media provides a cheat sheet, if you like, an ABC guide to understanding and improving your brand and the fact that it's really all out there for you on a plate. Some best practices that you can look at doing to, like I say, hopefully some, some relatively easy wins. And then just a few thoughts at the end from some various different attempts that different companies have, have tried in terms of embracing social media with some sort of mixed results, if you like. So <clears throat> in terms of uh, sort of the corporate bit, we'll just get that out of the way. Um, hopefully most of you uh, know who Nielsen Online are. I certainly hope so because I do all the PR. So uh, if you don't, I'm not doing my job properly. Um, it's basically a coming together of net ratings, which is measuring what consumers do and what they consume online and who they are. And then Nielsen Buzz Metrics, which is essentially measuring what consumers are saying and what they're sharing online. So it's a very nice fit for, for people to understand really the entire sort of 360 degree view of what's happening online. Anyway, on to why you're really here. Um, as I said, social media really provides everything you need to know about the health of your brand, product or service and how you can ultimately improve on it. There are different ways of looking at this and I've just picked a random few just to sort of sow some seeds, really. Um, I mean, when we look at social media and its effect on search, I'm sure most of you are probably aware of, of the way that it does that in terms of, I mean, Google's page rank and the organic results, very much based on the wisdom of the crowd, so that idea of the of people as authority and, and the way that the more links and referrals there are and so on, how uh, organic search and social, sorry, organic social media pushes up the, the, the shelf space of search. So some people have said and argued quite, um, <clears throat> quite strongly that your, the DNA of your brand, if you like, one way of looking at it, is the top 10 search results on Google. Obviously, Google being such a major part of people's searching um, uh, behavior on the internet. So whether you agree or disagree with that, but I think it's got some validity. So, I mean, if we look at something like here, this is in the States, Crest Mouthwash, if you do a search, you know, in the top two results, no problem there, absolutely fine, company websites. And if we go down to the third result, so this is the third organic search result on Google, and it's, uh, you know, it's not looking so good. A guy called Andy Wibbles, um, I don't know who he is or much about him myself, but I'm pretty sure he hasn't spent millions and millions of dollars marketing and advertising about how bad Crest mouthwash is. And that's really, in this case, if you like, it's really sort of polluting the, shell, uh, the um, shelf space of search. Um, you know, the third result there, it's all about turning customers' teeth brown. And Crest might be spending, you know, millions of dollars on advertising, marketing, PR, but all that work is ultimately undone because of social media. I mean, if you were to walk, you know, into a supermarket and buying your orange juice or whatever, you certainly wouldn't buy any orange juice behind those signs. You know, and it's a similar thing. I mean, whether, the, the point is on this, is whether that's true or not is really irrelevant. That's, that's what social media seems to believe is to be the case. So maybe he was, he was patient zero, if you like, and he was the first one to start talking about how uh, Crest's mouthwash turned teeth brown. People were maybe linking to him, referring to him, and so on. So, you know, that would be enough to, to turn most people off. So the sort of the DNA, really, of Crest mouthwash is significantly impacted by social media. Another way I talked about it being a cheat sheet, an ABC guide, I mean, this is... Um, a brand association map, which is essentially a visual representation of the conversations around a particular brand or issue. Um, in this case, it's Nike, but it could be around, I don't know, sustainability or the environment or advertising, whatever it could be. And it just, it's a visual representation. So, you know, two things to sort of bear in mind here. The closer that a term appears to the centre, the more closely associated it is with a particular, you know, issue, in this case, Nike. So, you know, Nike's words most associated associated with Nike, are shoes, comfortable, Adidas and Air. And then also it, it sort of plots micro-conversations. So the way that terms are grouped together indicates how they're talked in relation to Nike. So for example, if we look at four o'clock, imagine it's clock face, you look at four o'clock, you've got things like track, school, basketball, football. So they're discussed in relation to Nike. And it throws up all sort of interesting, you know, potential hazards, threats, opportunities, you know, perhaps things that are working, things aren't. I mean, just for example, um, this was quite surprising when we did this because Gap and Old Navy 
appeared at completely different sides of the spectrum. Now, that was surprising in the sense that they're both, they're sort of like almost sister brands, if you like. It's very similar product lines, appeals to a similar demographic, tend to be next to each other in shopping malls. So they're very, they're very similar. So, you know, Reebok and Converse are close together, you can see, but why not Gap and Old Navy? And it's all about the associations, the way that people discuss a brand in social media. So Old Navy, if you can see there at the sort of 7, 8 o'clock, it's discussed in relation to Nike around pants and shorts, so it's around products. Gap, on the other hand, its link with Nike is all about sweatshops. So it's understanding how brands are perceived in social media in very different ways. I mean, that's maybe not earth-shattering to people. I mean, Nike's a very well-known brand. We know about the sweatshop issue with Gap and so on. But, you know, maybe think about it if it, if it was around one of your, you know, your own brand or around an issue that, or topic that wasn't so well known. And these are, you know, these are relevant for everybody, whether it's the CEO to check, you know, how well the brand's doing, whether it's for PR, marketing, advertising. It's a sort of looking glass, if you like, into the health of your brand. And you can do these over time to see, you know, has particular messaging, any advertising or marketing. I mean, I might be, if I was the, the person in charge of promoting Nike Golf, I might be a bit worried. You know, I don't see golf or Tiger Woods on there, you know, paying him $50, $60 million a year, whatever. You know, perhaps, why is that not working? What can we do to try and um, maximise that association? I mean, one way you can look at it uh, is sort of formulaic, if you like, in terms of your, in terms of your brand DNA in, in social media. It's sort of, it's all about an experience. There's an emission, there's an effect. So if I go back to the to the Crest and Andy Wibble's example, the experience is this is a lone person who's bought... Um, a mouthwash. His experience is that it's turned his, his teeth brown. He's decided to talk about it, tell people about it, and there's an effect that people read that, um, and it probably means they won't buy it. If enough people are reading and forward it, forwarding, it's a, quite a significant effect, as we saw in the Google shelf space, that those results are, are being pushed right up in the organic search. So it has quite a major effect. Um, might sound really daunting, you know, how can one person have such a major effect on a brand? But, you know, it's, 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 it's not all bad. I mean, you get clues very early on as to potentially what people are going to be talking about your brand in the social media space. We did a survey about a year ago looking at sort of different types of behaviour relating to social media. And we're focusing here on speakers. So people segmented, you know, are, are you a speaker? Are you actually putting an opinion as opposed to someone who just reads an opinion or forwards an opinion on? So what was the most common feedback activity that speakers did? Well, they came to you first. They provided email feedback to a company about a brand or product or service. So perhaps what they're going to be talking about in social media, I mean, I don't know. Did Andy Wibbles email, did he get in touch with Crest before he went off and did his thing in social media? We don't know, but it's possible being a speaker that he did so. So you get clues early on. Also, you know, we asked what were, the, what were these speakers, so these opinion makers, if you like, what are they most likely to click on first when searching for some information? And again, it's good news. It's a company website or blog. Now, as we know in social media, you have very, very little element of control. However, you know, you are able to affect that slightly. I mean, these, this is sort of, you know, the seeds are being sown here. So, you know, someone comes to you to tell you a problem. It, it might be a problem. It might be something very good. It's not necessarily all negative, obviously. They're looking on your company website. So you've got that element of control or sort of seeding an element of information. You know, there, is, there are things that you can do about it. Um, Following on from that, so, you know, what can you be doing? What are the best practices? What are ideas that you can to really harness social media? So, learn to listen. I mean, just going back to that point, it's all about listening. I mean, people are telling you perhaps what's great or what's not so great about your product. You've just got to, you know, have some form of mechanism where you're actually listening to that. Because, like I say, you know, they could be coming to you and telling you or giving you, it's like a crystal ball, really. Chances are what they're telling you is what they're going to be talking about in social media after they've had some feedback or not from you. 